Hello friends and welcome back to another episode. So this episode is going to be on baby pins and um, uh, uh, umbrella attachments, umbrella adapters and so forth, okay? So I'm getting a lot of questions on baby pins and how they work and so forth, okay? So you can see here, these are the two holes, or the two countersunk areas that are in question. This is where the strobe grips, and I'll show you this here in just a minute. But this is the baby pin. This is the Avenger E250 as in Edward. E is an Edward 250 Avenger E250 and this is about between six and ten dollars somewhere in there okay it's not much but you can see I'll just do a 360 here okay so you can see there's only one side it's not on both sides these countersunk areas are just on one side okay so your strobe can either go in this one or this one here this here is a safety area like you can put a cotter pin in here or some type of safety cable to uh, like a lanyard to hold it down in case this ever were to slip if it slipped out a safety cable or a cotter pin would catch it from coming completely out okay so let me show you how to calculate here what what you do so here I have my strobe okay you can see the screw sticking out here right here okay the screw in the in the strobe Okay, now I've already measured this. So what I did, I just put this here and touched it to where it hit my finger, and I put my fingernail, and I measured it, it's 3 eighths of an inch. Then I put this, this is a collar stay from a shirt, that's all it is, from a, from a JC Penny dress shirt. So you do it again, you let it hit bottom, then you put your fingernail and measure again, and I measured one and 3 eighths inch. So I know that from the top of my screw here to where it bottoms out down in the well, I have one inch to work with, okay? I have one inch. So let's cover that. Okay, so I take my I take my baby pin here, right? So the top of this hole to here, it's gotta be less than one inch where I'm gonna bottom out. So let's go ahead and measure. And we can see the distance is three quarters of an inch so I'm good so when I put this in actually to the top you can tell to the top it's about seven eighths of an inch okay so I actually have an eighth of an inch to work with okay and then the top one just for your own edification it's about an inch and a half so we have three quarters on center three quarters for the first hole and then an inch and a half on the second hole okay So let me back my screw out here and I'll show you how we do this, okay? So I'm going to screw this out. So the way it works is you want to hold these countersunk areas. You can see there's a line. Well, it's really difficult to pick up on the camera. But there's a, a line here, like an indexing line, that's in line with the screw. There's a, this line. So what I want to do is I want to line this hole up, my hole up with that line right to know that I'm true so now I screw it in and I know that's not it's not in okay because it, it didn't go in far enough so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna back it out just a little bit and try it again and there we go I can tell now that's good okay she's going in much further now and I can tell just from experience if you can tell there's a little tiny lip here there's about a 30 second of an inch exposed on that collar that's how I know. If I see that 30 second of an inch, I know it's in the right spot. And here's how you double check yourself. You unscrew it just a tad, and then you turn the baby pin. See, it's positively engaged. Okay, it's not spinning in the collar of the strobe. So I know that's how the screw has engaged the countersunk area, and now it's acting as a true detent. So now, if I were to orient, orient my strobe literally upside down on my C-stand, on the boom arm, it's positively engaged and it's not going anywhere okay so I have positive engagement from my strobe onto the baby pin because I'm in this hole that's down first right the first hole okay, okay so what I'm going to do now is just put it into the grip knuckle of the uh, C stand okay so that's all there is to it so now you can see how the stroke goes in that's so the baby pin I can articulate this now the boom arm I've got 360 degrees of rotation in all different axes I have it here I have it on the rod so it's like an aircraft right you got 
pitch, yaw, and roll. It's kind of the same uh, principle in the photography here. So we got 360 degrees in, in all three axes. Okay, that's why a C-stand is so important, especially when you get into bodyscapes. Now, I don't want to get in too much into like bodyscapes, but uh, the light, there's, there's two types of photography where the light has to be absolutely precise. I mean precision precision placement of your light that's in bodyscapes and that's in your 1940s Hollywood glamour when you're trying to replicate the glamour of the 1930s and 1940s Hollywood they use barn doors and scrims and flags okay we don't use those today we have grids and so forth but it's the same principle it's the precise placement of your light that's why you need a C stand and then when you have your modifier with grids you can get the absolute precision and the placement of your light. Okay, so that's why C stands are critical, and the and the baby pin is what joins the grip knuckle to the strobe. Okay, now right here the handle is in the way, and if you put a beauty dish on here or something, it's going to collide. A soft box is going to collide with the handle, but you just have to play with it. You just keep rotating the different axes until your modifier doesn't collide with the handle it's very easy to do it just takes a little bit of trickery and right you got to adjust here and adjust there and you but you'll get it to the point where the the knob is either on the opposite side or somehow it's just out of the way you just got to keep fooling with it okay so next i'll go to the umbrella adapter Okay, so you can see I have an umbrella adapter, and the umbrella, I have an umbrella here, okay, and the way, the stem, I can't put it, it's my camera's too close, but the, 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 the stem just goes right in there. There's a little gate, and you just put the stem through there, okay, and then the strobe, the strobe will go through here. Okay, so I have the, I have my strobe. put it in the channel in this channel and I just screw here I just screw this down let me adjust my camera here bear with me for a second okay so so this is tightened down okay this is tightened down so I the light my, my speed lights not moving in this channel of the umbrella holder umbrella adapter then I put my umbrella through the, that little gate to show y'all simulate it would just look something like this okay so then the umbrella is in the front of the strobe and you're doing a shoot through okay or it would be bounced if you want to go the other way if my subject was behind me over here right it would be bounce if it's on this side it would be shoot through okay so let's talk about some other forms of adapters now if you want to do this is even a smaller baby pen. This here, let me get some. I'm trying to adjust the focus here. Bear with me. Okay, so this is a, even a smaller baby pen. You can tell. You can tell here this is a really tiny one. Okay, this is only an inch long or so. It's uh, about one and a half. One and a half inches long. Okay. And what this is used for is you put it... Let me readjust my... Let me readjust the camera here. I'm sorry about this. A lot of back and forth going on here. So you just put this in here. Like this, and it acts as like a little miniature baby, miniature baby pin. And what this is for, you want to use it like on a DSLR or an SLR. You put this right, you screw it into the tripod socket of your camera, and now you have right, you have your your. See, it's even actually in the way here. I have to articulate it, but so there you have your. Your camera holder okay I don't like it because it doesn't have a locking mechanism but I'll show you one that does okay so now I have to remove the speed light I'll go back to my umbrella adapter
adjust my ball head here on my tripod. Okay. So if you can see here, this one's got the part, the channel that goes into the hot shoe. Okay, it's square. It's hard to pick up. Okay, and then these are locking, locking wheels. They'll lock against the body of the camera. And I'll show you how it works. So you screw it, you just screw it into the bottom of the camera until it bottoms out. Okay, you want it to bottom out. And then you take your wheels and you spin your wheels up against the body. Okay, and that acts as like a lock washer. So now this is positively engaged and locked against the body of the SLR and it's not going to move. So it's just like, you can see the, I don't know if you can see the, you can see the little channel here. You put it in the channel of your umbrella adapter, get it centered, and just lock it down. Okay. So now my DSLR is locked into my umbrella adapter. I'm going to spin this whole unit around and I'll show you how it's positively engaged. So I have to just lock this a little bit better. Okay. So that's how I do my copy work. When you ever see me doing like DDFMP, right? Deconstructing and decoding fashion magazine photos. So you can see the, the lens is actually pointed down. Let me move this over a little bit. So you can see the SLR is pointed downward. Okay. So then when I have a magazine or something, right, I'm just, the magazine is under here and I'm just pointing right down toward the magazine. So this is what I mean why it's so critical that sometimes they have a C-stand because you have full articulation in all different axes, right? It's just, these things are just wonderful. And they're about $140. I mean, if you talk about a return on investment, the return on investment is fantastic for these C-stands. Okay, and there's my other, we did a thing called framed fashion uh, cutouts, right? We did cutouts for, this is my other one from Chanel. I have this here on display because I think it's absolutely beautiful photograph. But again, I'm digressing, which is what I do a lot. Okay, so that's it. So I showed you the, let's measure the, the overall, the overall length, if you want to know the overall length. Okay, we'll do the overall length. I just get a boatload of questions on this baby pen. And I, I understand, you know, it's completely natural to have a lot of questions. So the overall length of the pen is almost five inches exactly. Five inches exactly. Okay. And remember we talked about the distance from the, from the flush end to the first hole centered. The center of the hole is three quarters and the center of the second hole is an inch and a half. So again, measure your well on your stroke because one of the photographers was asking about an Ellen Crom and the, the well, the, the depth of the well on the Ellen Crom here. Okay, you remember we were talking about the depth down in here, how far it goes. So I have three of these baby pens. I have three C, three C stand, three baby pens, and they're just absolute lifesavers, especially for bodyscapes and your 1940s, 1930s Hollywood uh, black and white. So your, your old glamour, your old glamour shots. Okay, I hope this answered some of your questions about baby pens and umbrella stands and C stands and grip knuckles. If you have any more questions, please, by all means, just uh, send me a private message or respond in the video below. And uh, if you want a custom video, like if you have a very specific question that you've never had answered before, I will more than happily create a custom video just for you trying to answer your question. Okay, thank you so much.